This will be the last example of this uh, chapter. We're going to completely factor this polynomial over complex numbers and then we'll graph. Rational zero theorem, we're going to look at factors of 2 divided by factors of 2. So factors of 2 are 1 and 2, factors of 2 are 1 and 2. So we're going to go 1 over 1, 2 over 1, right there. Then we're going to go with 2 as our denominator, 1 over 2, 2 over 2. Now 2 over 2 is 1, so you don't need to check 1 twice. So you, this will be extraneous, we don't need to have both of them. So we're just going to try these. Now I know already, because I made this problem up, that both 1, 2, negative 1, and negative 2 are going to fail. So I'm just going to write f of 1 is not 0, f of negative 1 is not 0, f of 2 is not 0, and f of negative 2 is not 0. So now we're going to try 1 half. So again, you would normally need to plug these in, but to save time, I already checked them. So now we're going to plug in a half, f of a half, so we have a half cubed minus a half squared plus 4 times a half minus 2. Half cubed times 2 is a fourth minus a fourth. Well, those cancel out. That's nice. 4 times a half is 2 minus 2. 2 minus 2 cancels to 0. So there we go. x equals a half corresponds to the factor x minus a half. If you're going synthetic division, you have to do this right here. You have to use this factor. If you're going long division, however, uh, you don't need to do this. And I'll show you how to avoid fractions. I really do not like fractions, and I avoid them whenever I can. Now the reason I can avoid them, if you look right here, there's a Two, a coefficient of 2 right here, which means uh, you could multiply this guy by 2. Basically, what do you multiply this by to get out of fraction land? I'm going to multiply by 2. So, distributing it in, we have 2x minus 1. So instead of multiplying by this, what I'm going to do is multiply by 2x minus 1. Now it's not exactly the same factor, but it's the same factor, just double. It's just multiplied by 2. So now I'm going to go through the division. You have to be a little more careful. This is the reason I don't use synthetic division, because you cannot do this with synthetic division. You have to have a 1 here, just an x plus or minus something. You cannot do this with synthetic division. So if I was going synthetic, I would have to use this factor right here. So I multiply by x squared, we have 2x cubed minus x squared. Cancel x squared plus x squared is 0 x squared. And I'm going to bring down 4x. Now you want to look, now I don't write the 0 we normally get right here. I skip doing that. Because we had x squared plus x squared, we have 0x squared. How many times does 2x minus 1 go into 0x squared? goes in 0 times. And if you want, you can multiply 0 by here. So you get 0x squared minus 0x, or plus 0x, doesn't really matter which way you go. It's all 0. Subtract 0, no change. Bring down the minus 2, I multiply by now 2. We have 4x minus 2. Subtract 4x minus 4x, we have 0x minus 2 plus 2 is 0. And that's the remainder we were looking for. We get a remainder of 0. Now we have x squared plus 2. How do we factor x squared plus 2? So let's write down our complete factoring down here. f of x equals 2x minus 1 x squared plus 2. So, x squared plus 2. Let's see if we can factor this right uh, right away. Uh, I don't see how to factor, well, I do see how to factor this, but not over the real numbers, not in a way that you will uh, most likely enjoy. So what I'm going to do, do is go quadratic uh, formula. So we're going to set uh, 0 equal to x squared plus 0x plus 2. 
we have that. Now, this is a quadratic formula. Here, b is 0. It's a bit strange. Minus 4ac, 4 times 1 times 2. I'm going to skip writing the 1 over 2. 4 times 2 is 8. So we have plus or minus square root negative 8 over 2. And negative 8 is negative 2 times 4. 4 is great because we can bring it outside as a regular 2. Plus or minus 2, square root negative 2 over 2. And now the 2's cancel. Plus or minus square root negative 2. Now there's a couple ways you can write this. And if you look in your textbook, uh, they went through a few of these. You could write this as square root 2 times negative 1. Square root 2 times square root negative 1, which is plus or minus square root 2 i. Now, conjugate pairs theorem says they're going to have it in pairs. Now, what is 2 square root 2i? You could write that as 0 plus square root 2i. And if you conjugate this, you have 0 minus square root 2i, which is negative square root 2i. I'm doing this so you can see that uh, you actually got both conjugate pairs right here. Plus and minus, so we got 2i and the conjugate, which is negative 2i. So we got x minus 2i and x plus 2i. And if you want, you can definitely factor the 2 out of here now. Either form is okay, whatever's easier for you. Uh, to think about this right here, a half makes this first factor zero, and it's incredibly obvious that a half makes this version zero. So this is a fully factored form. So if the question is factor completely over the complex numbers, there's our solution right there, fully factored. The alternative uh, answer, the exact same process to get there, if I asked for what are all the complex zeros, so if I wanted to answer with all complex zeros, I would just choose the numbers that make each of these zero. We get x equals 1 half square root 2i negative square root 2i. So if the question was find all complex zeros, here they are. If it was factor completely, Here's that version. And again, that correspondence you can see right here. Square root 2i, negative square root 2i, and somewhere I forgot a square root. Square root, square root, square root, square root. There we go. And that right there is completely, or all the complex zeros or completely factored depending on the question asked. Now, if you give me the wrong version of the answer, you did all the same work, uh, you will get almost full credit if I asked for factoring and you gave me all the zeros.